Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. Today we're looking at one of my personal favorites from Mito with the Ocean Star Tribute. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, first we'll go through a deep dive review on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end. But throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can learn more, purchase the watch, as well as book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video. Take a closer look at this watch. Mito introduced their first waterproof timepiece called the Ocean Star in 1959, during the time when dive watches were just starting to become commercially available as recreational diving's popularity was taking off. The original model featured a single shell body as well as their Aquandra technology, which was a patented screw down crown system for waterproofing the case. Now, Mito's long history of water resistant watches has led them to the modern Ocean Star collection, which consists of no nonsense Swiss made dive watches that offer really good value and started a retail price just around $1,000, making them some of the best entry level Swiss dive watches on the entire market. Now, Mito has grown the Ocean Star collection to their Ocean Star 200, the Ocean Star chronographs, their newly released GMT models, and the watch that we're going to be reviewing here today the Ocean Star Tribute, a piece that reimagines the vintage dive watch in a modern value-driven package. So taking a look at the Ocean Star Tribute on the wrist, we have a case measurement of 40 and a half millimeters across with a case height of 13.7 millimeters and a restrained lug-to-lug -lug distance just south of 47 millimeters. Some of the thickness is attributed to that boxy sapphire crystal. And if we subtract that height, the case measurement is going to wear pretty compact on the wrist. The case overall though, reasonable proportions for a modern mechanical dive watch, which should allow it to wear comfortably in a wide array of wrists from 15 centimeters up to 19 centimeters without any issues, but it probably has a wider spectrum than just that. One other side note when it comes to the wearability is going to be the screw down crown. It does have some longer crown guards that are gonna walk the sides of its perimeter. So if you are contorting your wrist quite a bit, you could get a little bit of pressing into the back of your hand, but this is a minor issue and I only found this was going to be the case in very extreme circumstances. The crown operates in typical fashion at that first point when unscrewed, it then will be able to hand wind the movement, second position to change the day date function, and at the farthest pull that point then can adjust the time while stopping the second hand in the process, so hacking seconds here. When it comes to the case, the Ocean Star Tribute is going to be featuring mostly polished surfaces, going to have a stronger polished bevel along the side of the lugs, but for the most part is gonna really lean into that vintage polished look that complements that boxy sapphire crystal. In regards to the bracelet, so the 21 millimeter lug width is going to be a bit of a downside, but from there, when dealing with this bracelet, there's a lot to like. It comes in a mesh style and is going to meet at an underside clasp that is also going to be polished just like the rest of the case. This is going to make it more prone to scratching and will pick up scratches quite quickly. But in terms of its execution, this is a very good clasp and has a lot to offer. It has two separate sets of pushers. Now, one of the pushers is going to be one that you're gonna be familiar with. It's going to be traditional lock and unlocking mechanism. But the other set of pushers that's going to be a little bit smaller towards the end of the clasp is going to be your extension. Now this extension is probably one of the best I have seen in the price range. It's very simple and is going to be rather secure when you have it locked in that position. Uh, should offer close to 10 millimeters in terms of on the fly adjustment without the need of tools. And sure it was probably created with the idea of having some general dive extension functionality, but in terms of everyday wear, it is going to be much more useful when it comes to just swelling or maybe just wanting to do some on the fly adjustment uh, without the need of tools. Jumping back to the front of the watch, we have a 60 click unidirectional bezel, which is going to have an anodized aluminum insert to match the dial. At the 12 o'clock, it is going to have that triangular loom pit to help with legibility in the dark. The bezel does have a bit of lateral play, but not so much so. And in terms of that edge, it does have some nice notching, but the polished surface can make it a little bit more susceptible to losing grip in certain circumstances. Taking a look at the front of the watch, we have a matte blue dial protected by a vintage inspired dome sapphire crystal. Both the color and matte finish take on on more vintage flair and a representative of dive watches from the 60s era, which this one is pulling a lot of inspiration. 
The hour markers clearly fit this aesthetic too, with simple rectangular markers for each hour except for the 12 o'clock position where a classic triangle is going to appear. The Dow symmetry is evident as we move inward from the hour and minute track to the Dow text, which is minimal. The modern Mito logo and the automatic reference is printed below the 12 o'clock hour marker, and the Ocean Star name is printed just above it at the 6 o'clock marker. A simple day date window is positioned along the 3 o'clock hour marker, revealing the white date disc below. That day date disc is going to extend quite a bit into the central dial surface, but I think it does still match with the cohesiveness of the dial color and style. Finally, in the center, we have a set of thin pencil style hands, each containing a single rectangular section of white luminous material. The orange lollipop second hand adds a splash of color to the dial and ties in the hands together nicely as the blue and orange, I think just works together with nice cohesion. As for the loom, it's limited to just the hands and is adequate for low light visibility, but it's not as intense or consistent as the Luma and some other models, even from Mito with the Ocean Star 200. So if you are going for more of a professional execution, I certainly would recommend those. But this dial really pulls into that classic vintage style design. And even since I first reviewed this watch, actually a few years ago when looking at this watch when I was in Spain, Bilbao, Spain, this was the very watch that I had on my wrist for that trip. And I've just always loved the look of this design. Turning the watch over to reveal a solid screw down case back with a sea star motif embossed in the center, a familiar image that we find across the entire Ocean Star collection. But beating away underneath the case back is the Mito Caliber 80, a Powermatic 80 movement based on the ETA C07621. Modifications of this movement include reducing the beat rate down from 4 hertz to 3 hertz and reworking the barrel and gear train to achieve a power reserve of 80 hours, which is nearly double the original power reserve level. Additionally, the original balance assembly has been upgraded from the classic regulating pin system to a more sophisticated free sprung balance system, which comes laser regulated from the factory. Out of the box, all the Mito models that we've tested have come in with some really good specifications running within cost parameters in many instances, which is impressive, but also is kind of in alignment in terms of Mito, what they're doing uh, in general practice. They're well known for developing a lot of pieces that have COSC certifications. And when they were actually recording this information and releasing it, they were near the top five to top 10 in all of the Swiss watch industry for what they were producing in terms of volume. Again, this movement operates at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three Hertz, does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stopping the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, has a power reserve of 80 hours. Now to unpack looking at this Mito Ocean Star tribute. Now, not to be overly emphatic here in regards to the Ocean Star, just because I'm talking about it right now, but the Ocean Star to me, I feel is one of the best representations of a Swiss made watch for thousand dollars, especially when you're talking about the dive watch category. It is just simply very well made. Now, Comparing this to the Ocean Star 200, the Ocean Star 200 is going to lean a little bit more into professional specifications and positioning. This one's going to appeal to a different type of norm in regards to vintage aspirations and looking back within the archive. That might come with some compromises, mostly with the loom and also the use of crystal, which is more of an aesthetic difference rather than really any upside in terms of feasibility of pursuit of dive watches. But when you look past that, you get to see what this watch is really representing, a vintage inspired dive watch with many of the same components that makes the Ocean Star a fixture in this thousand dollar price range as a Swiss dive watch. The Ocean Star Tribute also comes with one of the best bracelets that I have found in a dive watch for this price range. I love the on the fly adjustment. The clasp is going to get scratched up pretty quickly with that high polish. But if you're not crazy about that and just care about the actual usability of the clasp itself, then this one is going to shine with great ease. And in addition, the bracelet is very breathable. It's not gonna pull hairs despite being that fine mesh style, which sometimes in these thousand dollar price range and below pieces, can be a challenge. 80 hour power reserve on the inside, a lot of value being packed there, but it's basically more peace of mind than anything else. And just like a couple years ago, when I initially was able to spend some time with this watch, I think still a lot of the same elements are there, if not maybe even further. As you go out and you get to handle hundreds, if not thousands of watches, you get more appreciation uh, for certain things that you've handled in the past. As the flock becomes a bit larger, you get to really hone in on what works and what doesn't. And the Mito Ocean Star Tribute just simply Simply works. Maybe not the most professionally capable dive watch out there on the market, but still value packed in a nice position and in an ocean star range that is incredibly overlooked. All right, guys. Well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. But also if you're in the market for this watch, check it out on teddybaldasar.com. Teddybaldasar.com is a full authorized dealer of all the brands we carry. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, 
All of our products also come with a full factory warranty as well. And finally, nine out of every $10 we generate goes right back into the content that we're creating here, as well as on our main channel to help foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.